Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Into the Hive Mind. Today we are talking about how the Tyranid Index in 10th edition feels and plays, uh, as well as some uh, really standout units and what I think you should be doing with this Tyranid Index in 10th edition. Uh, I've got, we've got points out since my last video, so that obviously makes a decent amount of changes in terms of what is good and what is not. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, I will start off by saying I have played three games with the Tyranid Index so far. Um, having a, a little newborn makes it difficult to get a lot of games in, but I did have a, a good Saturday of just three full games. Uh, the first one being against my teammates Eldar. Um, Eldar are definitely extremely powerful. I think we all knew that. And yeah, they just uh, they can pick up our monsters with ease. Um, you, between Fate Dice, D, D Cannons, and uh, Fire Prisms, our, our monsters don't stand a chance, unfortunately. Um, I got tabled turn two. Then my second game was against Space Marines, and uh, they can certainly get a whole lot of combos together, and they have those Gladiator Lancers that reroll all hits and wounds, and unfortunately, uh, and damage. And with that damage reroll built in with a D6 plus 3 AP4, pretty much auto-hitting, auto-wounding gun. Uh, they also just pick up all of your monsters, so also got tabled turn two in that game. Uh, and then game three was a Tyranid mirror match where it was pretty funny and we turned it into just a wet noodle slap fight uh, where neither one of us could kill each other's monsters. So definitely felt the discrepancy there um, in terms of lethality. So with that, I think that means Tyranids need to, again, adapt, overcome, find out a different way to try and play the game rather than just brute force monsters, uh, which is what my initial uh, hope and impression was for this 10th edition Tyranid Index, especially after seeing Haraspexes at 125, Exocrine at 135, and Maliceptor at 165. All of those seem very cheap for what they do. Um, and those are definitely units that I think are worth bringing. Um, other units of note, uh, Old One-Eye with his two Carnifex buddies for 390 is a little pricey for terms of damage output, but having the ability to throw a 5-up Feel No Pain on them uh, and them just getting cover for a 4-up save against Laz Cannons makes that unit ridiculously hard to shift. And uh, I do think that is a unit that is definitely worth bringing. But again, as I'm saying, I think Tyranids actually need to shift away from the mass monster mindset. Now, it becomes kind of a rock, paper, scissors matchup. There are certain armies that just can pick up monsters easy without any issue at all. And about half the factions in the game seem to have almost no answer for them. So if you do go for that skew monster list, uh, I expect half the games to just be a walk in the park when your opponent just literally can't kill any of them and the other half of your games to be over like mine were turn two when your opponent just brought nothing but anti-tank and just picks you up your entire army. So uh, with that, I actually think the thing that Tyranids are really good at is board control and scoring objectives. Um, that's not really new for Tyranids, but it seems more powerful than ever before. Uh, with the exception, we've lost, you know, our mobility. We're not nearly as fast as we used to be. Uh, most of our stuff moves eight inches at this point, and there's not really a way to advance and charge outside of Hormigons. Um, Hormigons also seem pretty decent, actually. Um, but with that, we have infantry everywhere, and lictors especially are incredibly good at just scoring secondaries. Turns out Infiltrate combined with Lone Operative on a very cheap model who can just sit somewhere in the board, tell your opponent that they have to get really close in order to kill you. And until they do that, you're just sitting on objectives and scoring secondaries. Um, it's really good and kind of forces your opponent to come to you. Most of my opponents really like gun lines so far. I mean, it, this is very much a shooting edition combat, unfortunately seems to be thrown out the wayside for 10th edition currently uh, is just nowhere near the lethality that shooting is and with that i think we need to f 
force our opponent to come to us. So with that, I think we're going to be hiding infantry behind walls. We're going to be hiding uh, lone operatives everywhere and just focusing on keeping our opponent on their back foot, in their back field, not scoring secondaries. And part of that is also shifting maybe entirely away from monsters. So that way, if your opponent draws that, bring it down, you just don't give up points at all. Um, the obvious exception to this is if we go too far into just like MSU infantry and everything, uh, our opponent can just choose fixed objectives and take no prisoners against us. Um, so you don't want to go too far into just mass MSU. But having a melee threat that basically can go through walls, uh, hide out a line of sight until you're ready to pounce, uh, kind of going back to that trapdoor spider lists that Tyranids used to play. Um, that was back in 8th, ninth edition. Uh, basically force your opponent to have to come to you because of these lone operative rules and then jump out with a unit of Broodlord Gene Stealers or Von Ryans, uh, I think is really the way that we're sh we should be playing now. Combine that with Swarmlord or a Hive Tyrant, again, probably just hiding because you definitely don't want them to die. You're taking them for their uh, CP buffs and their command phase, kind of just that power uh, where you're, you want to be able to have those free strats. Strats are hyper efficient in 10th edition uh, because CP are just at a premium. So I actually think Swarmlord for 250 points seems very overcosted for what he does, but with CP being at such a premium, he might be worth it uh, in order to get that extra CP on your turn. And your opponent's army is going to have very core stratagems that they just want to consistently use. Uh, world leaders really like to just have the bleed on an objective when you kill a unit. Turning that off is great. Uh, Armor of Contempt, turning that off, is, or you know, at least making it way more expensive is phenomenal. Uh, just pick your opponent's best stratagem, make it to where they basically can't use it after the first time uh, because CP is, is just at such a premium. So what I'm thinking is we're going to be taking a bunch of lifters. Lifters are just solid gold. I think Death Leaper and a single lifter has now become a staple in almost every single list. And you either want two other lifters or two units of just base gargoyles. Gargoyles are our other unit that are just absolutely insane at secondaries. Being able to either deep strike in and do an action if we need it, or deep strike in, shoot, and move that D6 in order to get to any kind of board position that we need is just flexibility that I don't think really many armies can compete with. Uh, so you have your core of a Hive Tyrant, either a Walking Hive Tyrant or a Swarm Lord in order to get your CP. Now this is just kind of flavor effect for you, uh, whether you want that additional CP on each of your turns and to be able to vect one of your opponent's CP or to be able to just have a free stratagem on both yours and your opponent's turn, you can kind of tech into that. But with that, I think we want to have Death Leaper and I'm going to say three lifters, uh, just go all out with this, in addition to probably two units of six Von Ryans, um, that all of which just infiltrate in the midfield. Um, you're not trying to be hyper aggressive with these instead try and put them just in key strategic locations where they can get onto the objective if you need to for a turn and just be able to threaten those objectives but until you're ready to do that you basically just want to find your safe position to hide and then you want uh a i think a unit of 10 gene stealers with a broodlord it is pretty expensive, uh, 280 points for the unit for what it does is pretty pricey, but just as a counterpunch unit, uh, one unit I think is absolutely worth it. And you can even give the Broodlord Synapse with the enhancement, which is really great. And speaking of enhancements, uh, Alien Cunning, absolutely take it, 30 points. I'd pay 50 points for this, redeploying three units after, uh, I believe after you see if your opponent's going first uh, is just insanely good, especially with infiltrators. Uh, if you end up finding out, yep, no, my, my opponent is going first and they're going to be able to just kill all my infiltrators, 
that's fine. Pick them up, put them in reserve. Lictors especially uh, have a really broken combo of just pick them up, put them in reserve, and then in your opponent's turn, they get to rapid ingress for free. At least one of them does. And you can then uh, show up just outside of 12. And because you're showing up after your opponent's movement phase, they there's nothing they can do about it. They can't shoot you because of lone operative. They can't charge you because you're outside of 12. And on your turn, you now just get to move eight, have a four inch charge if that's what you want. And it's just, it's really good being able to basically guarantee that these guys are always gonna have the initiative. Um, so with that, I also think a Neuro Tyrant is actually pretty hyper efficient for its points. 105 points to basically just be able to give out Synapse wherever you need it uh, is just insanely good. And in addition to that, it kind of fits with our little trapdoor uh, scheme where we're basically going to give a unit synapse, we're going to launch it forward, kind of similar to 8th edition when we were double moving gene stealers uh, with Swarmlord, except now you're basically just hide behind a center ruin and threaten the midfield. You're probably not getting into your opponent's backfield minus some lictors or uh, gargoyles deep striking in just to get behind enemy lines if that's a strat or a secondary that you pull. And other than that, we're just focusing on controlling the midfield. The nice thing about the uh, missions that we've seen so far is it's only one objective in your opponent's deployment zone. The other three are all in the midfield. As long as we can compete for that, that's all we need to do. And between Termagants being OC2 and also just having mass cheap bodies, I think is the way to go here. Um, again, you've got Lictors and Gargoyles for your secondaries, and then we're going to throw in the... Neuro Tyrant with at least 11 Neuro Gaunts, I think is actually really good with him. Even though it makes him T3, your opponent just doesn't feel like shooting at them, apparently, at least in all of my games. Um, the Neuro Tyrant basically was always the last unit I had on the board, uh, which is fair. His damage output is minimal, but the command phase buffs of just giving out Synapse is really good. Again, especially to like a unit of Gene Stealers that you're gonna throw forward into your opponent's line, get, making sure that they have Synapse, so that way on your opponent's hitting back, you can give them that five up feel no pain is really good. Uh, the thing that I've been experimenting with a lot is actually Termagants, like three bricks of 20 of them, uh, combined with Venomthropes are just very difficult to shift. Now with this, I like to go more the Hive Tyrant route rather than the Swarmlord route. And the reasoning for that is you just sit there and give that free five up feel no pain uh, to two units. Uh, and because of that, basically you are you have the unit slightly tail back to some venom Venomthropes hiding behind a building. And then that unit of Gaunts is getting stealth and light cover and they can just sit in the midfield. They're gonna have a four up save. They're gonna be minus one to hit. And as long as you're within 12 of that walking Hive Tyrant, which he should be right next to your venom Venomthropes, so they will be then you give one unit five up feel no pain and if your opponent then says okay fine i'm going to shoot the other unit then at your hive tyrant just says okay free strat they also have a five up feel no pain and those termagant bricks just become ridiculously hard to shift uh in the same vein hormagants actually can do the exact same thing and their melee threat is actually pretty decent purely because of our high fleet adaptations uh having 60 attacks the adrenal surge to critically hit on fives uh, combined with either lethal wounds or sustained hits uh, basically guarantees you're going to get 20 wounds on something as long as it's not t6 plus infantry um, then yeah either lethal hits will give you just 20 wounds on the hit roll or the sustained hits against t5 or less you should also get around 20 wounds uh, based on sustained hits and then wounding on fives uh, all of this at ap1 is not a bad price point at all for 140 points. Uh, especially because, again, we are just very hard to shift with Venomthropes. And so because of this, I think I'm honestly experimenting with just mass infantry builds. Uh, ranged Tyranid Warriors are actually pretty interesting. Um, they, they provide Synapse where you need it, uh, which is great but also just benefiting from those venom tropes, giving them stealth, giving them light cover. They're suddenly Gravis Marines, essentially. They're, they're T5, they have a three up save in cover, 
and three wounds apiece uh, with minus one to hit, they're pretty hard to shift for what is a 22 point model. Um, and in combat, they are definitely not a slouch. Five attacks hitting on threes at AP one for one. Uh, the guns are are nice. They're fine. It's it's just consistent chip damage that you get to throw in. Hitting on fours obviously isn't the best, but uh, Tyranids aren't really ranged. Uh, so just being able to throw out some chip damage and finish off some units here and there, in addition to being able to fall back, shoot, and charge, is they're just a really consistent unit for their points. Uh, again, most of this is all just on the back of Venom Thropes. They're kind of propping this whole list idea up by making us at least durable and making it where, yes, your opponent absolutely can kill you, but they're probably spending way more points to kill you than you put into that unit. Uh, Zoanthropes are good, but th they are kind of our only ranged anti-tank option. Um, and I don't know, I, in the Tyranid Mirror match, my opponent was running 18 of them in addition to two Exocrines and two Rupture Cannon Tyranifexes. The Exocrines were giving the Tyranifexes basically reroll ones to hit and were just spotters for them. Um, he still was really struggling to kill any of my monsters. Uh, by the end of the game, sure, he'd, he'd killed eight of my ten, uh, but also me, who was not running any Zoanthropes at all, uh, I'd killed six of his nine. So it was just... Uh, and, and all of this was just through small chip damage from everything. Uh, Exocrines actually seemed to be our best shooting platform. They were doing way more damage than even the Tyran effects with the Rupture Cannon was. Uh, just AP3 for flat 3 damage with multiple shots it is really consistent. Uh, even if you're wounding on 5s, lethal hits helps. Um, I'm not saying that they're going to blow up a tank when they shoot at it, but they seemed to do more damage than anything else in our list. Uh, the Zoanthropes, they can spike and absolutely pop a tank, the biggest issue I have with Zoanthropes is their 24 inch range. And so the issue with that is once you fire, you, you, you get your one turn and hopefully you spike because next turn you were 24 inches away from that tank. There's probably something in your opponent's army that's now gonna tag you and you have no way to fall back and shoot. Uh, so that's, that's what I did to him. He came forward and shot me with 15 Zoanthropes in one turn and killed the two Carnifex is attached to Old One-Eye, but between his entire army, he could that's all he could kill. He couldn't actually kill Old One-Eye uh, because of my 4-up save uh, from Venom Thropes. And so because I lived, uh, Old One-Eye then just went and tagged. Between him and Death Leaper, I tagged two of the six-man Zoanthrop squads, and they just had to spend a turn doing nothing, which is really bad for 400 points. Uh, so, yeah, I, zone throws are fine. They're they're good. You just need to make sure that you have a screen to make sure they can't get tagged. So that goes back to probably taking gaunts and, and screening uh, neuro gaunts for their points. Uh, if you just need a screen, neuro gaunts are your guy. Uh, Twenty two models for ninety points that are T three. Again, a six up save, but between being able to give them stealth and cover and a five up feel no pain your opponent is probably spending 300 points at least to pick up that 90 point unit. Uh, in addition, they're probably using combo pieces. Again, our opponents absolutely can kill our stuff. Our job now, I think, is just gonna be make sure that they are wasting, uh, basically, they, they have to throw way more firepower than they want. Uh, and if we tech pretty much entirely into just infantry, all of these ridiculous anti-tank guns, these fire prisms, these like gladiator lancers that are eight strength 14 ap4 for d6 plus three damage uh okay cool you killed my you killed two warriors uh that's 40 points it's it just i i think that's kind of the direction we need to go we do need to play a little bit of skew uh because our index is not nearly as powerful as some of the other ones in the game uh in terms of lethality or durability so if we just play a straight up fight Unfortunately, it seems like we're just going to lose. So with that, uh, kind of a list idea that I ended up creating. Uh, here's some other tech pieces. Uh, so far, 
Spore mines can do actions. Uh, I'm not relying on that being a thing in the future at all. I'm assuming that's going to be FAQ'd away. Um, they very well might still be able to get like board control, such as like engage and stuff, which would be pretty cool. Uh, they are very expensive point wise, so I can see them keeping that. But of course, you know we're we're not going to actually pay the points for them. We're going to spawn them with bio bores. Um, so three units of one bio bore just. Even if they don't do actions and they don't score anything in the future, uh, just having that movement block, especially now that they uh, block advances, uh, three units of Biobores just to throw out those annoying spore mines, is 120 points and is going to cause your opponent massive headaches uh, anytime they try and do anything. Uh, with that, we're going to have those 10 Gene Stealers with a Broodlord. That Broodlord is going to have Synapse and... Again, this is a unit that's basically just going to hide with your main force with that Hive Tyrant, those Venom Thropes behind the main building, and basically pop out and punch in the middle of the table, on the, probably on that center objective, uh, at a point when it's most advantageous for you. Uh, get Make sure, just try and get, get your full rerolls, get those uh, devastating wounds from the Broodlord. Uh, then we've got a Neuro Tyrant. Um, in this list, he's actually not joined by any Gaunts, but uh, even though he gets reduced to T3, having him with Gaunts is fine. Uh, people just don't seem to really want to shoot at him. But in this list, he's just hiding behind a building, uh, purely just there to hand out Synapse. Uh, we do then have our Hive Tyrant, who's also chilling just out of line of sight, again, giving those free, uh, free feel no pains for the most part in your opponent's turn. And then either changing through your synaptic imperative, changing your adaptation, or um, if possible, giving out that free uh, adrenal surge. Now, interesting rules question. I have no idea how this works. If you're um, with the will of the hive mind ability, turning a strat free, it the rule says pick a unit. And then you can use them as a target for a free a, a stratagem for zero CP. Now, I don't know how that works with our stratagems that then target two units. Um, currently, I, until an FAQ comes out, I always like to play the worst version for myself uh, just to make sure I'm not cheating my opponent, basically. So I'm playing it currently where if you were to use Adrenal Surge... Uh, which can target up to two units. If you're doing it for free through the Hive Tyrant, I'm saying it's only affecting the one unit because Will of the Hive Mind says pick a unit. Uh, if you guys have some inside knowledge or ha I've missed something that you absolutely do get to target two units for free with that strat, let me know. I I I'd love to see it. Uh, but again, I'm playing on the safe side. I'm making it where that's only affecting one unit. Uh, but that's what that Hive Tyrant's there for. Just in your opponent's turn, feel no pain. And in your turn, uh, probably Adrenal Surge if you can, Synaptic Imperative if you can't. Uh, then you've got two squads of five Barb Gaunts. Uh, other armies have this too, but minus two advance and charge uh, and move for infantry is really good. Again, at just keeping your opponent penned in their area, making sure that they're playing your game, you're not playing theirs. Um, and also... Barb gods for their points are just ridiculously durable. Uh, they're just 10 point space marines when you're next to a Venom Throat with stealth. Uh, T T4, two wounds, three up save, minus one to hit for a 10 point model. Uh, and again, you can throw feel no pain on them. So I'm actually tempted to just see what happens when you run three squads of 10 Barb gods, not even for their annoying ability, just for. 32 wound T4 bodies for only 300 points. <laughs> um, yeah, just just seems really good. Um, but two units of five Barb Gaunts, they, they do stupid things to your opponent. Uh, then three Lictors, as I talked about, these guys are probably just being deployed in the midfield where you're then just going to get secondaries. If you then go second, throw them up into reserve, uh, rapid ingress them, bring them down for just to get secondaries they're really good at that and if you go first and your opponent just happens to have very important vulnerable characters lictors are fantastic at assassinate because all their melee attacks have precision and uh if you can redeploy with the infiltrate rule that is again something else that i'm not entirely sure um with the redeploy it specifies using normal 
deployment rules. However, because you have infiltrate in your data sheet keyword, you, you might be able to still infiltrate with your redeploy. I'm gonna wait for an FAQ on that, but worst case scenario, if you wanna redeploy these guys, you can absolutely throw them in reserve and then they have that special ability to rapid ingress for free. All right, uh, in addition to that, we've got two single pyrovores. Uh, these guys are amazing. Just if you have mass shooting, um, mass low AP shooting. So if you're running exocrines, you probably don't need pyrovores. But if you're running like the Tyranid Warriors or the Gaunts, all of their shooting is AP nothing or AP one. Pyrovores are amazing because they turn off cover. Um, so basically two individual pyrovores. These guys sole job is hey, I'm trying to shoot this unit with a bunch of infantry. Uh, so Pyrovore first, go in, hit them with your flamer, turn their cover off, and then fire away with all of your AP nothing, AP one weapons. Um, and so speaking of which, then we go into three units of six ranged warriors. Um, looks like we can have, with a six man unit, you can have two death spitters, two strangle cannons, and uh, or two barbed stranglers and two venom cannons. Uh, we'll see if that stays. I guess that is how it was in ninth, but you just didn't want to pay the points for Barb Stranglers. Uh, but they're good now. And Venom Cannons, again, on the infantry, I think are fine. Venom Cannons on monsters for D3 shots don't seem worth it. Uh, but on the on the Warriors, they're great. So three squads of six range Warriors with two Barb Stranglers, two Death Spitters, two Venom Cannons. Uh, then we've got our one unit of three Venom Thropes and two units of six Von Ryan Leapers. Uh, and alien cunning throw it on the neuro tyrant so basically how this list works is you're just going to have mass infantry that are really annoying to shoot uh, because of these venom tropes and so then your opponent hopefully wants to come and punch you especially because of, you've got lictors with lone operatives and they need to come close to be able to kill those and then once they are close you've got warriors you've got the barb gaunts you've got uh, the gene stealers as a counter punch and if your Hive Tyrant is able to kill them without exposing themselves, then that's great. But I, I think this is kind of the list. Because I went through and talked about each unit, I'm now going to go through the entire list so it's nice and easy for you to understand. Uh, you've got your Neuro Tyrant with the uh, Alien Cunning. Then you have a Broodlord with Synapse attached to 10 Gene Stealers. You have your Walking Hive Tyrant, no attachments, he should just be hiding behind a building. Then you've got three units of six ranged warriors, one unit of three venom thropes. These guys should just be hiding as the center core of your army. Two units of six von Ryans infiltrating, three units of lictors plus death leaper also infiltrating, uh, two units of five barb gaunts, uh, and then let's make sure two individual pyrovores and three individual biovores. Uh, so with that, this list does give up uh, no prisoners if your opponent decides to take that. But honestly, most of your stuff is actually really hard to kill. Um, you, you've got all these individual units. Sure, your pyrovores are throwaway. Your your lictors are kind of throwaway if you put them in your opponent's field. Uh, but it, I don't think your opponent actually takes no prisoners against this. If they do... I don't know what their other fixed objective is going to be, but uh, the, the list basically just gives you lots of really annoying to kill infantry and completely wastes your opponent's super anti-tank guns. So we'll, we'll see. Um, that's basically this list idea. I'll throw up another video with some other list ideas, but that has been my experience in 10th so far, and that's what I'm going to be trying. So I'll let you guys know how it goes. And uh, give me your list ideas. And if you've had lots of success with NIDs, hopefully more than I have with just two games of being tabled turn two. But that's just how it goes at the beginning of a new edition. We're waiting for things to get balanced out. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys next time.